Hello, uh, Guy from Bridgeford here. And uh, today uh, I'll be walking you through a very quick sneak peek of our uh, latest addition to our platforms, uh, which is supply chain security. Um, and by this point, I think you've already had enough. You've heard about supply security, supply chain security a lot for the past couple of months. Uh, we've taken our time and thoughts about and had collected our thoughts about what's the best way to integrate um, how we believe uh, optimally we should uh, be looking at infrastructure application security and supply chain as that connective tissue between them. Um, and you may know this by now, but you know, um, Bridge Through by Prisma Cloud, we have our own set of organic scanners um, that are able to identify bad configurations across infrastructure as code and uh, actually uh, across a bunch of different types of uh, configuration, cloud configuration attributes you, you're probably using. Um, from Terraform to CloudFormation through to Kubernetes and most recently Customize and Helm um, to our uh, addition of um, uh, vulnerability scanning, um, which uh, thanks to our good friends here in Prisma Cloud, we're now able to um, um, essentially take Docker files and um, package managers, open source package managers, and to identify misconfiguration, not just misconfiguration, but also uh, vulnerabilities um, that are publicly disclosed and identify those as part of that same CLI run. Um, so if you want to learn more about that, go to Chekhov um, and learn how you can use a single uh, CLI invocation powered by our, our API to identify both IEC and open source and image uh, scanning capabilities. So we have all of this great data that essentially reflects both infrastructure and application information. And we've decided to apply a new data model on top of it. And that data model um, essentially speaks to how um, those uh, different attributes in infrastructure are connected and dependent on, on each other. Um, and also, thankfully, within the Prisma Cloud family, we have access to cloud runtime and cloud workloads. Uh, and you can already see some of that on my screen right now. So the supply chain uh, graph, uh, which we're now uh, uh, publicly launching, is a new form of data model you can use to visualize your supply chains. And what it essentially does, it takes a code-centric view of your infrastructure and application. So you can see here on my bottom left um, is my GitHub organization and our a GitLab repo. And you can see all of the different files that are hosted on that repo actually sorted by the number of misconfiguration and vulnerabilities that are associated to them. So this model essentially identifies your you know, popular uses of infrastructure, image, open source, and also secrets, um, and starts to combine that data together to identify chains of risk. Um, so think of this as a real-time attestation of your supply chain. Um, so this one uh, starts off with a lot of misconfigurations that we find in Terraform that are also actually resonating in our runtime. So I have this s3.tf file here up on top. It's hosted on my GitLab repo, but it's deploying S3 bucket data um, through my data operations and data science uh, functions. And here you can see um, my file, you can see the resource block. And actually when I click it, um, I get my handy dandy resource explorer with all of that metadata of how this is configured and also the you know previous history of all of the misconfigurations associated to it. You can also look at the runtime resource that it um, triggers and also look at that resource. You can see it also here in an S3 bucket, which is actually encrypted with a bunch of uh, its, uh, its configurations that are uh, fetched from runtime and as well as um, full audit trail, uh, resource history, and a bunch of other cool things. So all of that data is here. You know this, you know you get this from Bridge Crew um, and Prisma Cloud already, um, but we've added um, uh, a lot more data into this model uh, based on you know what you're probably using for supply chain. So what I'll do now is I'll exclude that Terraform uh, data from my, my supply chain graph and, and I'll start looking at a few other attributes. You can see that uh, the data is automatically rendering and reloading here on the back end. You can see the first thing that it finds is a Docker file. And we have a Docker file that's being used as part of our infrastructure deployment. And it's essentially an EC2 Terraform instance that declares that Docker file. Uh, but it's also finding a bunch of uh, misconfigured open source packages on it um, that essentially can also be remediated through um, bumping that uh, operating system. All of that in the, that same uh, data model um, um, and out of the box, you get that if you're if you're using Bridgeford to protect your uh, GitHub repos. Um, so that's part one. You get a 
auto auto discovery of uh, potentially misconfigured uh, infrastructure and application files sorted into this neat data model that you can uh, see prioritization, see resource explorer, and actually search on top of. Uh, but there's one more thing that I think is interesting, and we'll talk about this time, uh, which is uh, branch protection rules. Um, so we know, you know, we know we can protect our infrastructure and application based on the code that we use. But what about our source control management tools and our CI/CD pipelines? So I'm not sure if you're following Chekhov and the latest additions to that, but Chekhov has recently received two uh, great major updates. Um, the first one is the um, um, uh, Chekhov SCM runner or VCS runner. And what that essentially enables you um, to do is when you run Chekhov in CLI, you can start to see the different configurations that uh, that CLI is exposed to. So that could be a GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket set of configurations. Um, but it can also be a GitHub action, as an example. And we've already started to write best practices and policies on those um, on those files. And you can uh, check out uh, checkoff.io or check off on GitHub uh, to explore some, some of those policies and see um, that uh, your configurations are already up to par. Let me see where the GitLab config is. It's right here. So let's take a look at the GitHub configuration scanning as an example. So GitHub configuration scanning, essentially, uh, you run Chekhov in CLI. Um, Chekhov uh, identifies if you have a, um, a secret um, uh, um, that enables it to fetch that local data. It doesn't send anything back backward. Um, and if it identifies that, that means you're using a GitHub enterprise probably, um, it will immediately start to trigger some of those best practices um, for your VCS configuration. So for example, it will look if that GitHub organization is using uh, MFA and it will actually print it directly inside your uh, already known GitHub, uh, excuse me, your Chekhov CLI output. So be on the lookout for that. We're constantly adding new policies and new workflow runners, um, but just another step towards looking, looking at supply chain, um, not only from an infrastructure and application perspective, but you know, taking a much broader look at policies um, across those pipelines and making, making um, infrastructure and application just speak the same language. So this is it for me now talking about supply chain and the supply chain graph. Next time, uh, we might delve a bit into our, some of our um, advanced features. Uh, so be on the lookout for um, supply chain search and supply chain fix.